the chatbot launched by the Chinese firm DeepSeek. 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 Think of this. China announced a generative AI model called DeepSeek a couple of weeks ago. This sent out shock waves across the whole world. For context, DeepSeek's entry into the market wiped out over $1 trillion from the US market in a single day. NVIDIA, the chip manufacturing giant, lost $500 billion or 17% of its value in just hours after the news of the Chinese AI platform broke out. This event didn't just cause the stock markets to stumble. It has made everyone question every single assumption that the world has so far made about AI. We can safely say that the AI bubble in the US has collapsed, with DeepSeek democratizing deep tech innovations. It is no longer a play of the Stanford educated or the Silicon Valley based and billion dollar funded startups. But amidst all the noise, it is important to ask, where is India's deep seek? Why isn't India making strides in artificial intelligence like the United States and China? Why can't we disrupt any industry, let alone AI, like China does? Netizens had rather creative ways of expressing their disappointments. Some commented, that while the rest of the world comes up with ChatGPT and DeepSeek, we come up with platforms like AstroTalk. Others were quick to blame schemes like the Ladli Behera Yojana and other freebies, lamenting the priorities and visions of the country. Answering where we are in the AI race demands a lot of first principles thinking. Let's ask some fundamental questions. 1. Why should India get into deep tech research like this generative AI? Most reactions in Indian tech circles from a position of national pride. If China can do it, so can we, seems to be the motivation for them. That is not a good enough reason to shell out billions of dollars. ChatGPT spent billions of dollars and popularized AI to become a household name about two years ago. It was quickly followed by other models like Perplexity and Gemini. China has come up with something similar at a fraction of a cost. But what purpose does one extra AI model solve? Think of it like this. When a search engine like Google exists, why should someone build an exact same replica with no added benefit? What purpose does Snapdeal solve that Amazon does not? Nandan Nilekani, the mastermind behind many innovations like Aadhaar and UPI, thinks along the same lines. Months before China rolled out DeepSeek, he opined that India should not build another large language model. In his view, application of AI at a large scale is the next big thing and India should be focusing on that instead. It also aligns with India's capabilities. Innovation is not only coming up with disruptive brand new ideas, modifications, cost effectiveness, better quality, and purposeful add-ons also qualify as innovations. The idea of e-commerce did not originate in India. For decades, we simply followed the global order. Right now, India is the country that's making e-commerce obsolete and disrupting status quo by coming up with quick commerce. Can we draw an AI parallel? Will India lead the AI ecosystem in ways that we can't imagine today? This is only something that time will tell. The next question to ask is, does India want to be the first mover? As the name suggests, a first mover is someone who enters the space before everyone else. Take Uber for example. They were the first ones to come up with an app-based cab platform and continue to lead despite competition from other companies. It's easy to assume that India cannot be a first mover in AI. Naysayers will come up with 100 reasons why we can never compete with the US and China. Can and want are two different things. Let's take a step back and ask if we want to be the leader. First mover advantage is real. Microsoft, Intel, and many such companies continue to dominate their industries due to the sheer fact that they came first. OpenAI's ChatGPT was the first AI model to be launched at such a large scale. Billions of dollars were spent into its development only for it to be pushed to the second spot by DeepSeek. Clearly, OpenAI did not have the first mover advantage. It shouldn't have been hard for anyone to guess this. If anything, history teaches us why. Yahoo was among the first search engines on the internet, but Google has over a share of over 90% despite entering the market much later. In tech, there's only so long the first move and advantage will last. Letting others do it first comes with its share of advantages. You see where they succeed, what goes wrong, and how the market responds. All these learnings without a penny from your pocket, mind you. India wasn't the first one to explore Mars. But when we did, it was more successful and costed us less than a Hollywood movie made on mass travel. It is a smart strategy to recognize our limitations and play by our strengths. However, 
it is equally important to build new capabilities what's stopping us and actually how do we get there one the importance of r&d is not fully understood in india the us and china pour billions into deep tech research and have backing from both the government and venture capitalist who are willing to play the long game while india has seen a startup boom the focus has largely been on fintech and e-commerce however deep tech which requires patient capital and long term vision is largely ignored a deep tech startup might take 10 years to show results and that's a timeline most investors in india aren't comfortable with two weak industry academia coordination deep tech flourishes when academia and industry work hand in hand the us has mit stanford and berkeley collaborating with private firms to create ground breaking innovations china's ai firms works closely with its universities sharing data talent and resources but in india industry and universities rarely interact beyond placements companies rarely fund university led research and universities don't have enough incentives to translate research into commercial products 3 brain drain leading r&d firms and deep tech companies have many indians in their teams the ceo of perplexity ai is an indian who has moved to the us for his phd letting off smart citizens has long been an issue and it seems even more of a problem today than ever before we must admit that there is a silver lining to the china launching deep seek It is perhaps after decades that there is a section of that Indian population that wall should be out there and compete with the rest of the world. Zoho Corporation CEO Sridhar Vimbu stepped down a couple of weeks ago and announced that he will be heading the company's R&D division. Indian VCs are not determined to jump on board with the AI train, with many investing in startups that do anything AI. The anti-immigration wave that's sweeping the United States. might be a golden ticket to retaining indian talent couple this with a semiconductor mission and significant government push in academic research and development india is not far away from being an industry disruptor india may have been deep down but it's not out of the ai race this is mayank see you in the next one